In this example, we're told that the transformation t can be expressed as uh, the multiplication matrix A times a vector x. And so we're supposed to find a vector whose image under this transformation is this given vector B. So what we're really being asked to do here is find a vector x such that the matrix A times x will generate this, this given vector B. So we're asked uh, really to solve this matrix equation um, of the same type that we've been solving since the beginning of this course. And so we can do that by setting up an augmented matrix, this uh, matrix A creatively given entries 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and augment it with the matrix B, negative 1, 3, 7. Now, I paused the video while I wrote up the row reduction here of the augmented matrix in blue, um, just so this video doesn't become 20 minutes long. Uh, just talking through it briefly. So I, I wanted to get a zero in this position, so I used the row operation negative 5 row 1 plus row 2. That gave me this new row. And feel free to pause and, and uh, work through these steps on your own if you can use the practice. Uh, I also wanted to get a zero in this position, so I did negative 9 times row 1 plus row 3. And then at this point you might notice probably that um, the second row, or sorry, the third row is just a multiple of the second row. Uh, and so when you notice that, then you're likely to have, or you will have a, a row that turns into all zeros like it did here. Um, but I continued through, so I wanted to get a one in this position. I like to uh, make the pivots one, if it were, especially if it works out nicely, like these are all multiples of four. So I did negative four, one fourth times row two to get this row. And then I wanted to get a zero in this position, so I did eight times row two plus row three, which gave me that row of zeros. At this point, I know uh, that the system has infinitely many solutions uh, because we have pivots in the first two columns, but then we've got, we do not have pivots in column three or column four, which tells us that x3 and x4 are free variables in this system. Now the instructions asked us to find just one solution to the system. And we know that there are infinitely many uh, because we see that we have free variables, x3 and x4. That gives us permission to let x3 and x4 uh, be any values that we want. So I'm gonna let, oh, let me write that word led. Uh, let's let x3 equal zero and x4 equal zero. You can let x3 and x4 equal whatever you want. Zeros are nice values because they're, uh, you know, the simplest ones to plug in. Uh, if I now go to row two and consider the equation that that row represents, uh, this is saying that, remember that our columns represent x1, x2, x3, and x4, uh, the coefficients. So that row two says that x2 plus two times x3, which we just set to zero, plus three times x4, which we just set to zero, is equal to negative two. So this is all zero, so this boils down to x2 equals negative two. Now looking at row one in the same way, that row says that x1 plus 2 times x2, which we now have a value of negative 2 for that, plus 3 times x3, which is 0, plus 4 times x4, which is 0, so I'm going to put just a plus 0 here, is equal to negative 1, according to this right here. So x1 minus 4 is equal to negative 1, oops, negative 1, which implies that x1 is equal to 3, if you add 4 to both sides here. So our one solution is, let's see, 
x1 is equal to 3, x2 is negative 2, and we set x3 and x4 equal to 0 here.